All right. Well, I guess we'll start. Uh, thanks. Uh, first off, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. So, I, my pleasure. Nice for us to finally talk. <laughs> um, I guess uh, to start off, you know, uh, how did you get involved in music, and at what point did you decide that uh, film composition was uh, the direction you wanted to go in? Um. Well, film composition, I, I didn't really know what film music was, really, because mm. I was brought up I was brought up in a, a kind of a, a fun background. My father was a songwriter, okay. and uh, where, I was, where I was born in Scotland, he had a residential recording studio. And uh, we'd have uh, every week bands from all over the world coming to stay and, you know, we had like Ozzy Osbourne living with us for about four or five months recording an album. And as a child, uh, I thought this was what you did. I thought you just banged on drums and played the piano and, uh, and had fun because every, everyone else near me were farmers. Um, and uh, the only world I saw was the music world. So I thought, well, I've got to do something like that, I suppose. It's, it's, it's fun and it's, <laughs> um, everyone else was doing it. So... And then I basically, um, I went to school, I started, I started doing com commercials, a lot of commercials when I was young, like 16, oh, wow. 15, 16, um, and then a lot of radio idents and, and jingles, you name it, for nappies, I was doing them. Um, uh, but the commercial world, I knew the songwriting. I, I didn't, I didn't relate to because I couldn't, I couldn't write lyrics to save my. I, I, I had no idea how to get words to rhyme, so I thought, well, that's not going to happen. Um, but I, but I, I did like writing these little pieces of music that was a different style for 28 seconds. Uh -huh. So uh, I did that, and then, and then when I was about 18, we had to do a school project, 17, 18. Had to do a school project, and I did it on music for. Uh, it was going to be a commercial uh, project, but there wasn't that much mileage in it. <laughs> so uh, I kind of thought, well, I'll, I'll do some films, and I had to choose some people uh, that I wanted the right to, uh, and I and I chose Stanley Myers. Oh, okay. Because uh, Stanley was living then, and Stanley uh, uh, Hans Zimmer used to work. For Stanley. Right. So I wrote to Stanley and Stuart Copeland because for some reason I remember I remember as a child watching Wall Street mm -hmm. the, uh, and just not knowing what on earth this music was because it wasn't it wasn't music a lot of the time it was drums and percussion I, and I studied percussion okay and I, I knew I wanted to kind of I thought drumming was fun and, and I found it easier than trying to sight read the piano because I, I was so bad um, <laughs> So I thought, well, I'll do that. Uh, I wrote to Stuart, asked his advice for my paper. And then, and then I started, for some reason, then watching films. And, I, and, and then I kind of, I saw films like Wall Street and Rain Man. And I just thought it was just very interesting, the way this music was making me think more about the plot and the characters that were going on. Mm -hmm. Instead of how I treated music as, I've got to sell, I've got to sell this <laughs> brand of coffee in 28 seconds um so i so that's where i kind of thought it'd be interesting and then and then at school i, I you know i met I, I think i did my first short film when i was 17 because i and i i kind of really enjoyed it it was just i i got to to write longer melodies and they didn't have to be they didn't have to consist of a, a sting on them so that's that was that that was the beginning uh -huh. and then um uh, and then, then, then it was a very, very long, 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 long journey into lots of different. <laughs> um, I mean, you, you're constantly, I guess, working, and you're switching between different genres a lot. Do you find it hard to be able to, you know, you know, go from a comedy and then switching to, you know, something much more heavy and dark? I mean, how how does that work on your, I guess, your psyche and in terms of being able to write the different emotional music, you know, changing back and forth so quickly? Well, you know. I, I I don't want to say I find it easy because that could get, <laughs> that could uh, create a lot of trouble for me. <laughs> but the thing is, is that I think what the 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 best experience I had was doing commercials uh -huh. because every day was a different project and every day was a different point of view. 
and you you would do you know you could be doing something for a large choir and orchestra and then the next day it could be um a dance track or just different genres um and and that's i always found that exciting and i think the thing is being able to kind of jump around it, it's being versatile uh-huh. and i and and i and i and I, and I like being able to kind of jump into the different genres, but the styles and, and know that, you know, uh, yesterday I, you know, write a bit of comedy and then today I've got to, I've got to make them cry. <laughs> and, uh, it, it's just, it keeps, it keeps you on your toes. Right. I mean, I, I mean, that makes sense. I didn't, I never thought that how commercials, you know, you're going really quickly back and forth. That makes a lot of sense. Um, well, the, th- the thing is, is that it, it, it's the com- commercials music. They, they, they've got to, they've got to tell a story mm-hmm. in, 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 in 28 seconds and, and film music, we, we can tell the story in, you know, 70, in 70 minutes, the mm-hmm. story's got to progress. And so's the theme writing a pop song is two and a half minutes. Right. A lot of them don't really tell very good stories, but <laughs> the, the, the the intention is, you know, you meet a girl, you fall in love, and you get married, and then you get your heart broken. There's there's a kind of there's a journey there, and and to be able to get this in a small space of time is, is a great great skill, which there's you know there's masters at it that just do it absolutely perfectly, mm-hmm. and it's a, it, it's a it, it's not to be taken for granted because a lot of people kind of. They all air commercials, and but my goodness, the, the amount of times I found myself with the television on and subconsciously singing the the the, the bed mattress theme um, <laughs> for a certain brand in, in Los Angeles. So it, it, it's a it's a great skill, but it's a great training to get your craft together. Right, and so I guess I mean you started really short with commercials. You you, you did some films, and then you do something like uh, Call of Duty, where you have to compose you know, seven, eight hours of music, how, how does that change? Like, for a video game, what challenges does that uh, bring up? Well, the, the challenges with the video games are, it, it's, we, you know, the Call of Duty and the way I try to look at computer games are, there's, there's, there's very simplistic ways of doing it. You write your music and you deliver it. Mm-hmm. And then that music can get looped. And 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 basically the game the player will just sit there with the same piece of music just looping mm-hmm. constantly, um, and I and I just uh, Call of Duty was was the first film uh, game I'd work uh, I'd done, and and I just thought about it as the way we would approach a film in regards to you write your main piece of music now instead of them looping it. Why don't we do variations of it where it's in the same key and same tempo so it can be cut and uh-huh. connected? Uh, so, the, so the player, instead of just hearing the same thing going round and round in circles, instead of the, uh, so the player can sit there and hear a, piece of, a, a proper piece of music where it's developing with the gameplay. Mm-hmm. So, so even if the... You know, the the, in the game, the programming's not there for them to change when he turns left and he shoots somebody. Musically, we're still evolving, so the player feels they're in they're in a film. Because right. I think I, what I liked out of Call of Duty and what a lot of people said was, you know, they felt like they were in a film. And uh, you know, musically, you, you know, I think we tried to cover. There, there was a lot of tongue in cheek there musically oh, because there was yeah. kind of you know there was there was not there was a there was a few nods to uh, the genres of films and uh-huh. it, and it and it's fun you oh, know it was a lot that, of fun <laughs> that, 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 that's the thing is that it's meant to be fun and uh, and I know that you know that there was a there was a lot of hours of music done but it was all connected and it was just different variations and it was it was you know watching. I'd never played computer games uh, before, mm-hmm. and uh, I went and cl- I went and played it, and I got a bit too addicted to it. But I, but, I, but the thing is, is that having the music set to it just gets you into this world that it's very unlike a film. And 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 I think uh, again, film and uh, game music is very like commercial music. A lot of people have not appreciated how effective and influential it is. I know, um, yeah. 
and and it's so essential because it, it's it's it, 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 it's 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 so essential that you can just you get into that world. You're that character. I'm not sitting there watching the film in 3D. I'm playing, and I've got this bombastic soundtrack behind me, uh, <laughs> pushing me through. <laughs> so uh, we all had a lot of fun on that. Oh, it was, yeah. I, you know, when the, the music starts up and you're about to, you know, play a multiplayer match, I still remember, you know, oh, that's, you know, I loved it. So it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. But listening to your work, I feel that your uh, your themes, you know, they strive in uh, simplicity. You know, very your, your themes are very simple uh, that echo kind of big emotions, uh, like crying with laughter and, and ironclad, too. But do you do you favor, you know, simple melodies versus creating these, you know, big, more complex arrangements? Yeah, I, you know, my coming coming from Scotland, I I do think we you know we we subconsciously do get influenced by our, by our surroundings, right? And musically, I know that um, I don't I don't listen to it now, but I know as a child, you know, a lot of Scottish and folk music I was I would listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, so melody lines to me. Uh, I always tend to, and I don't know why, but I kind of I sit back and I'll and I'll hear a, a Scottish lament going on, or you know a, 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 that simplistic top line where it's it's hummable, and I, I I think that crying crying with laughter. I knew that we couldn't. I didn't want to do a a tune because it was just going to be. Uh, um, it was a very intimate small film. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ev evoke a tune, if that makes any sense, and just kind of suggest that there was something there. And uh, and every time I started doing a strident tune or something that was prominent, it just distracted me from the visuals, and it distracted everyone else. So I thought, you know, so you know, nice and simple, where it's you, it, it's four bars long, and you can hum it, and that's mm -hmm. it. And with Ironclad. I knew the danger of doing bombastic tunes or, or very complex, uh, complex tunes was it was going to slowly turn into a, a, you know, a, a big Hollywood score, right. which none of us wanted. And, and the thing was that there was, no, there was no temp for the film. And we just basically, we knew that we wanted to do something small. You know, it's very difficult to do action scenes and not go grand uh -huh. because at the end of the day, it's boys will be boys and we want to have some fun. Um, and the thing is, is that we looked at it and I, the, the tune wise, I personally felt that to make it more intimate and smaller and have long arcs made it grand without having to do big fanfares all the time. Mm -hmm. And a, I just, yeah. think, you know, I, I think to go down that route, it's 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 uh, it can turn very Hollywood sounding and uh, and I think we were just trying to make it intimate and and melody wise I I I like a tune that I can I can play on the piano and I'm not very I'm not a good piano player <laughs> so I like I like to be able to play my chord progression and my top long one finger and and then and then remember it straight away so and again it comes back to commercials trying to do a tune where it's with the hook is there immediately right right um and I, 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 I just love trying to figure that out so you're able to start off and as soon as you hear that uh that that melody line it's it's basically a hook because you're going da da and it's right boom straight straight to it I mean, that, that's what i yeah that's what i loved about ironclad that i mean the you had these amazing textures and instrumentation that it felt i don't know it felt really it felt heavy but it didn't feel like you know gladiator 2 or kingdom of heaven 2 you know it felt like no yeah no 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 you know the the thing is is that i are you, you know, the danger was doing a film like this, everybody's going to say it sounds like this or it sounds like that. Right, right. Or, 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 or the good one, it's uh, um, choir and strings. What a cliche. I, it's, it's, it, you, at the end of the day, I think it doesn't matter if it is a cliche. It's what works. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that, you know, to try to get a small band feel, um, one of them... I managed to track down this fantastic band um, from Germany, and they they do 
these, uh, they're called uh, Corvus Corax, and they do the most humongous festivals all over Europe, and it's me- medieval heavy metal goth rock. That's the only way I can describe them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you look them up on the internet, and the crowds are massive, and they're playing the the tunes that you would imagine during that period of time. Mm-hmm. Um but with passion and rock and roll sensibility. And um, I got them on board. They were in Germany when I was here, but we managed to send, you know, through to the joys of technology, send files back and forth. Um, but they, they again, uh, were a good influence because you're, you're, you've got to remember that period of time, the melodies were very restricted as well. Oh, yeah. And when you start listening to Gregorian chants and, and music from the medieval, they they don't they they don't sing, and they don't kind of uh, do big tunes. It's, there's a structure there, and there's a thematic context. But so I try to look at it that way as well. You think, well, I can't do Gregorian chant because this this is just going to kill them. <laughs> but what 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 is the principle of the Gregorian chant? And again, it probably came back to Scottish Laments. So I thought, okay, nice simplistic uh, melodies that that can be used as big arcs through the picture. Because Uh there was a lot of battle. And I know that I just didn't want to kind of do the uh, battle music uh, where it was just choppy, choppy, choppy. And And I just thought, well, try to get nice, long themes and uh, and then the and then Corvus uh, Cor- Corvus Corax to go and do their thing on top of them. Boy, did they do their thing! <laughs> uh, when you when you write, uh, do you get more inspired by uh, the characters in the story, or is it more of the plot and the setting, or do you try to find a balance uh, between the two? Uh, well, you know, I think there's so many things that can change it. You know, you can. Geographically, it can change your themes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the period, time can change your t- themes. But the one thing I think I've I've learned through you know the the great training I've, I've thankfully been able to have is that uh, it it doesn't matter where the period of time and it doesn't matter where the characters are based. It's the emotion mm-hmm. and. And I think that I try to look at it and go, it doesn't matter if the guy's 12, 15 or 2015. Um, love is love. Passion is passion. Uh, hatred is hatred. And these feelings don't change. And I think that uh, I'll look at it. And that tune I could do for a, a modern day film, but uh, it, the instrumentation would change, obviously, uh-huh. because... I don't. I don't believe in. I, I think sometimes when you see period pieces and there's electronic percussion going on, I don't quite understand that because I think that kind of puts you off guard. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I, I think that you've just got to look at the characters and and look at their eyes and 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 go. Well, they're 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 doing a cause here, especially in, in Ironclad. They, they have a mission here. And it's uh, defend their fault, and that's the same as somebody in 2010 defending their home. Right. Um, so I just like to kind of look at it as uh, the emotions of the character. It doesn't matter when or where they are. It's just simplistically them, and and how do we get the viewer to sit back and uh, relate to them? Because I can't relate to a knight in 1215. I don't know about you. <laughs> I, I I I can't. But when you know music can help, and we can get the 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 the, the viewer on a journey and sit back and and relate to it. And music, I think, is just a it's a wonderful other communication we have. No, I, I mean I love that answer a lot because I'm not a musician. I, I I don't play any music or, but it was music that got me into film when I was you know nine ten years old and. Uh, it's uh, what I use to write scripts, edit. I mean, it's for me, it's the most important part of telling a story. But I, uh, that answer, that's a great answer. I love it. <laughs> you know, here, here's the interesting thing, because it's something I've always wondered, and I, and I still can't figure out if, if 
emotion is geographically different. So as, a, as somebody being Scottish, if what to me, if I get played something to you and that to me is, is sad, mm -hmm. if, if, if you feel the same or if somebody in China feels the same, because it's, a, it's an interesting thing with the world of film music, how we're trying to do something for, you know, so the whole world can experience. Uh -huh, right. Um, uh, and and a love story, whether musically people do feel differently, because I know, I know, uh, I, 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 I'm going back to Scottish lament. <laughs> a lament to me is one of the saddest things I can ever hear. Um, but then some people in the Western world might say it's rather boring. But it's uh, it's the sound, you know, the Aborigines in Australia, the didgeridoo. I, I've been at a, a concert in Edinburgh where they had a recital and there was people crying. Uh, it's, I mean, it, yeah. it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing that musically how we can just tell different stories. And, and I think emotions are the interesting thing, I think, about how, to me, I try to think of what my emotions are for my country and, and hopefully other countries can relate to it. But it's, it's, it's uh it's an interesting um it's an interesting idea how people think differently about what emotion is because i think generally funny music is funny music no matter where uh, i mean it's yeah i agree with that 100 percent. so that's we're in the same boat there but um i guess to uh i guess wrap things up i always like to ask composers if you had the uh, opportunity to rescore any movie ever made with no disrespect to the original composer like something that you'd want to try out what movie uh would you would you pick <laughs> <laughs> well uh the thing is is that my top list of films musically i don't i don't think i i could do as good as they selfishly i'd like to rescore the goonies uh -huh. Ooh, uh, that's good <laughs> <laughs> but i but i i know i know i just couldn't i couldn't do it i i think um i i think you know if there's something i'd like to oh boy that's a hard one no i, I i'd say I'd, I'd love to do the goonies but i know i wouldn't do a good job beating <laughs> <laughs> that but i think i think you know the problem is is that to, to that kind of question is difficult because i look at it and i go well the film I know, so I I already can relate to the music, and I'd and I'd and I'd say, well, I'd always have that in the back of my mind. Oh, definitely. My, yeah. fa my, fa my favorite films have got my favorite film scores in, so I'd be influenced by that. So if if um, oh, I've got to come up with one answer, haven't I? If I <laughs> if I don't, I come up bad. No, I'm sticking with my guns. I do Goonies, okay. and I and I put my mark on it, and and um, I'd, get, I'd get that pirate ship out of the cave. That's what I would do. <laughs> all righty. That's, that's a good answer. Um, but uh, I guess that's all I have for you. Um, I thank you again so much for doing this. It was a real fun, real pleasure. My pleasure. And hopefully we'll, be, we'll speak soon. There's, more, there's more, more projects coming and more games coming. Oh, definitely. Um, you're doing, are you, you did Crisis with Hans, right? Uh, yes, Crisis Two. Right. Yes. Okay. Can't wait for that. So. Yeah. No, that's that. That is that is very 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 good. The gameplay on that as as a as a novice game player, my goodness, that is <laughs> uh, that is one breathtaking uh, game. That and uh, and again, again, you know what? It, it's it's a it's it's a pleasure to do these games because you get into that world. You actually right. start doing it, and for a brief second, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, sta I'm, uh, I'm standing there wearing a nano suit, ready to take on a, on uh, New York. But um, uh, it, it's 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 just it's just it's fun, and and uh, I think I'm working on Spyro at the moment, and Ooh. and that that's a different, a whole different ball game because it's it's not Call of Duty and uh, and Crisis Two for you know people running around with guns. It's, right, right. it's the exact opposite. It's, it's, it's very like, um, I, I did a two, a couple of months ago, I did the Rango game because we were doing, Hans was doing the, the, the film. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I took over the game and I did that. And again, that was an, it's another thing where it's 
you can't take yourself too serious because it, you know it's it's uh, it, it, it's fun and uh, and people want to kind of play these games and 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 at the end of it keep smiling mm-hmm. and you know Rango was great fun because of that because it was a, a change you know the interesting thing you go from Call of Duty you go to Rango the game then you do Crisis to and then you do Spyro <laughs> so. On top of the film projects, these games definitely get you into all the different genres. So there's no, there's no, there's no getting bored with uh, changing styles. That's for sure. <laughs> Alrighty, Lauren. Well, thank you so much. Great, lovely speaking to you. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.